impulse gives it an instant force. It still considers the mass and the friction and all those things, but um, it might actually be more appropriate for walking. Hello guys, welcome back to another video tutorial. So today we're gonna to look at how to move your player or any object for that matter in Unity in different ways. There's quite a few different techniques out there and people use different approaches. So I wanted to kind of iron out some of the differences and let you guys um, choose what's the most appropriate for your own games. So let's get straight into it. In this sample scene here, I've just got a player object you can see here. And over here on the right, I've got a rigid body attached, a box collider and just a player move script, which I've created. And I'll just open that up. And what I've got here, I've just blocked in a very simple script which checks for the keyboard um, key presses for the arrows left and right. There's nothing else going on here. And um, to make your life a bit easier, if you do want to follow along or just get access to this very simple script here and this scene file, I'll put a link below in the description of the video um, so you can grab that. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already. All right, so let's get on with it. Um, so. I'm just defining and declaring the um, rigid body 2D here, so we have access to that. And we're actually, got, we're actually going to start down here in the fixed update because we have a um, rigid body attached to the player object. And as you guys probably know, when uh, moving uh, rigid body objects which are dynamic as opposed to kinematic, you want to do it in the fixed update because it has a fixed time step and updates objects based on that rate. This eliminates um, variation in frame rate between different computers and performance levels and things like that. So um, to keep it simple, anything that you're moving with physics, do it in the fixed update. If not, do it in the update. So in this first example, we're going to change the velocity of the object directly. Um, so I'll say rigid body 2D dot velocity equals new vector2 and for the first value we'll pass in move speed which I've defined as a class variable up the top and for the y we'll just say zero because we're only going to be moving in a linear straight line um, so we'll jump back to unity and run that and have a look at what happens so now when I press the right key it moves but when I let go the player keeps moving now that's a problem um, and that's one of the implications of doing it like this for left I'll say move speed left and else if neither left or right are down then you can zero out the velocity like this so right let go left right left right okay so that's one approach you can use. Um, it has its place. It's not always recommended. It depends what you're doing. Um, but that's one way to move a rigid body component. Technique number two, we are going to apply a force using the add force um, functionality. So once again, we'll say rigid body, oh, rigid body 2D dot add force. Got to put in a um, vector two. And for the left, we'll just have a negative move speed. And in this case, we don't have to put anything in the else because the way this moves is, as opposed to assigning the velocity um, directly, the add force pushes the object. So every time we press the right or left key, we're going to add a force directly to the object like that. So let's test it out and see what happens. Press the right key. Aha. Uh -huh. So you can see what's happening here, right? And that's one of the key differences of using um, the add force. You can see when I press it, the, there is an inertia or rather um, there is an acceleration that takes place based on the mass of the rigid body. So as I hold it, and if I hold left, it has like a slight effect. It's like you're walking on ice or something like that, which could be very good um, if you are building a level that's 
um, meant to be on ice. You can have a different or a variation to your um, player controller script. Anything with force added takes into consideration the mass that you've assigned to the rigid body. Where if I was to up this mass to 100, hopefully that's enough, it'll be harder to move this guy. Look, he's not, he's just barely moving. You can see he's very slight movement. And to then um, cater to this, we would have to add a more significant force. Um, so you see, if you are going to add force, you'll have to balance the mass and also the, um, the friction of the surface with the force you want to add. And there's another thing to consider. Adding force does not have any effect on kinematic rigid bodies. That is to say, uh, rigid bodies that are not using the physical space. So when you set a rigid body to kinematic, it no longer um, gets calculated by the uh, physics. So if I run that and press right, press left, nothing. So that's a very important consideration to make. You can only use the add force when um, your rigid body is dynamic. Oh, and there's another thing that's quite um, relevant. There is another parameter here. A second parameter for the add force and it's the force mode and there's two force mode 2d if you're in 3d I think you have a few more but if you're working into 2d space you have two options uh, one is force and one is impulse by default it's using force so if you don't put a second parameter it'll it'll just use a force which is what we saw with this gradual movement impulse gives it an instant force it still considers the mass and the friction and all those things, but um, it might actually be more appropriate for walking if you didn't want to have that slow um, movement build up. So let's run that and see what happens. So press the right key. Ah, I've got the mass set very high at the moment. So let's bring it back to one. Boom. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but <laughs> there was a... I might just... Uh, <laughs> I might show you what the other one was just for a quick reference. So, um, if I, so what I'll do, I'll have the um, force mode on the right key press and on the left key press, we'll use the impulse force mode just for, um, for reference so we can compare the two. Save that. Should be interesting. If the guy doesn't fall off the edge, maybe I'll give him a higher mass, maybe in two. That's probably not gonna do much, but we'll see. All right, so if I go right, oh, okay. So when I go right, it has this uh, gradual build up. where if I go left, it's instant. So what that means is even though it was going very fast, um, you could tweak that move speed and quite effectively use add force for a walking situation. Because what that means is your player won't have this gradual build up like on ice, but walk instantly. If you're making like a marble game or a car game, you might want to use the force mode here, where if you want like an explosion effect or something instant, then you can use the impulse. I think that makes sense to you guys, right? So what if our um, rigid body is kinematic? Or better yet, what if our game object does not even have a rigid body? What if we're trying to make like a classic retro styled game that there's, doesn't have any physics and you want to calculate all the movement yourself and you don't want to rely on any of this inbuilt unity physics and fair enough because um, that comes with its own problems right so what can we do we will go up here into the update function and instead of writing it in the fixed update we can write it directly into the um, left and right arrow press um, condition blocks up here. Um, so the first one we'll want to do is transform dot position and we'll say plus equals uh, transform dot right and I'll tell you what all this does in just a moment. Uh, multiplied we need a delta time don't we? Uh, by time dot 
delta time uh, times five, Let's say five offset. Okay, so here we want to move the transform position directly um, by telling it to move right. We, we're adding a unit of measurement to the transform position. So we want it to move right and we want to multiply it by um, delta time, which is the, the, the time um, since the last um, frame. It essentially uh, stops frame rate inconsistencies. If we were to move um, this object without using the delta time and just did it like so, um, it would move, but it would be completely out of whack and every system would run it differently. So we want to, we always want to use delta time when moving an object within the update function. Um, so then if we want to move it left, so down here we'll um, change the plus to a minus. So we minus equals the right and see what happens now. Cool. That's really nice. It's really smooth. And of course I'm running it in the editor. So the appearance of the movement might be a bit kind of choppy. Once you run that out as a proper production build or whatever, um, it would be smooth. Another way that we can do, which is quite popular, depending on what you're doing, of course, um, is to translate the object. You guys might have seen this before. So I'll get rid of that temporarily or permanently. <laughs> um, okay, so transform dot translate. Um, so here we can do, um, I might try to do vector two dot right um, times time dot delta time once again and we want to times it by five. So I may not explain this in the last one. Um, the reason I'm doing it by five is on its own time dot delta time is probably not enough. It needs like an, an additional um, multiplier just to make it a bit more um, powerful, a bit more noticeable. So we'll just add an additional scope like that. And then I'll copy and paste this for the left. And I think can I say left here? Yeah. Vector two dot left. Um, right, that looks good. So let's run that and see what happens. So you can see very similar to the previous way we did it. And I don't know the exact um, differences um, underneath the hood between those two, but I imagine they're doing something very similar. There's a very similar outcome, and you could probably use either of these um, without too much problem. Right, so another thing to, to mention here is that, um, like a lot of things in the Unity API, there's additional parameters. And the second parameter in um, the translate functionality is the space. You can see here relative to. Now you can use two different space, local space and a world space. So what does that mean? Or well, self, which is local. Um, by default, it uses the self space. And what that means is, why don't I just show you? That seems like the, the way to do it. <laughs> Jump back to Unity. And what I'll do, I'll just grab my player and I'll just rotate the player like this. And I'll just run that now. So we're now when I press right, the player is adhering to its local transformations. In this case, we have changed the rotation. Okay, so it's, that's the self space. So now if I stop that, jump back here and change this to um, world space, 
you might be able to imagine what's going to happen. You see that? It's ignoring the local transformations and just moving it in a world space. An important thing to note is you do not want to um, use these techniques, the translation and the direct transformation manipulation on um, non-kinematic rigid bodies. That is to say, game objects with rigid bodies attached that are being calculated by the physics engine. For those kind of examples, you'll want to use the fixed update as we did in the early two examples down below over here. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, give it a big thumbs up down below for me. And I'd like to quickly thank my Patreon supporters up here who um, are very generously donating to me every month. You guys are bloody awesome. I cannot thank you enough. You, you do a lot to keep me motivated and to keep this channel um, going. So thank you very much. If any of you want to help support this growing channel, I'll put a Patreon link down below. As a Patreon supporter, you'll also get access to all the different project files from all the different past tutorials. Uh, player controllers, shooting scripts, um, AI, and all these interesting, fun little um, things that you can use in your own games and tear them up and do whatever you want. All right, guys, all the best. See you in the next video.